What's up everybody? Welcome back. It's been a while. Before I want to talk about some other gigantic billion dollar movie franchise, I want to talk about an actually high quality film. 12 Angry Men. 12 Angry Men is a 1957 courtroom drama about a jury of 12 middle-aged white men who are assigned a case of, lo of a low-class 18-year-old who is accused of murdering his father. If the jury votes that he's, that he's guilty, then he is executed. Initially, the case seems to be open and shut, but one man votes non-guilty due to having a reasonable doubt about the case and slowly convinces the other members of the jury to agree with him during the runtime of the movie. And if you didn't know, this movie is actually pretty good. So instead of talking about how much of an incredible piece of filmmaking this is, I wanted to have some fun and rank all 12 of the angry men from the biggest asshole to the biggest hero. Keep in mind that this video is not meant to be taken seriously. This isn't some kind of psychological analysis of these people. This is just me having some fun. Also, there will be big boy spoilers. Please go watch this masterpiece before viewing this video. I don't care if you don't like black and white movies. Go watch it right now, you little child. Anyway, enjoy the video. The juror in the room that I felt the strongest distate is probably juror number seven, AKA the dude who wanted to go to the baseball game. Even if this guy votes not guilty relatively early, I would still say he's probably the worst behavior of anyone in the room. I think that proves that this movie is not about whether the boy was a murderer or not, it's more about how each member of the jury acts and looks on the case, and that's the big, biggest problem with number 7. This guy clearly does not care in the slightest about the case and is just trying to get the case done as quickly as possible so he can go to his baseball game. When he votes guilty, it isn't because he actually thinks the guy isn't guilty. It's because it's more convenient for him to do so. He treats this serious situation incredibly apathetically, which I think is just a major problem. This guy doesn't care at all. In the scene where this racist guy does his dumb rant, the guy doesn't even fully stand up and turn over like everyone else. Instead, he lazily turns halfway over in his chair. And not only that, he's also rude and obnoxious. He talks to everyone disrespectfully, which makes him even more unlikable. Overall, this guy is a complete douche, and unfortunately, the next couple of guys aren't much better. Up next is juror number 10, aka the racist guy. This guy doesn't really need an explanation about why he's an asshole. He's a prejudicial bigot that has looks at the case with an incredible amount of bias. He was pointing out the guy's culture and race as a way to show that he is guilty, instead of using real evidence and points. Like I previously mentioned, he went on a giant rant on how some people of color were dangerous and menaces to society. And at times, he actually acts like some of the common racists that you can find now. Like when he says, I'm not racist, I like some of them, and then proceeds to blatantly say racist stuff, which is something that a lot of people do nowadays, and it's pretty wild that it predicted the way some Redditors act now. And not only that, he's also just a rude scumbag who constantly yells and treats everyone disrespectfully. Even he himself realizes how much of an asshole he is and just depressingly sits on a desk in a corner. Yeah, this guy's a piece of butt. Moving on. Following up, we have juror, juror number three, aka the last guy who votes not guilty. This guy kind of serves as the main antagonist of the story. He has the strongest opinion that the boy is guilty. Now, I don't think that having that opinion is necessarily bad, but you see that he will strongly disagree to any of the points made by Juror 8, who says the boy is not guilty. Then you realize that he has other motivations. He works as one of the boy's executioners and actually has a personal desire to kill the boy because of past history he had with kids. This is obviously very screwed up. Not only is he looking at the situation unobjectively, but he actually has a very diff dangerous motivation. He's also incredibly short-tempered, rude, and constantly yells. However, while all of these traits are bad, I will say this. Unlike the previous two dudes, you do a actually see this guy as a human. He clearly has a troubled past, and by the end of the movie, he does realize his flaws and redeems himself. These things don't really excuse how he behaved in the movie, but at least you can understand him and feel some sort of sympathy. So, even if he is the main antagonist, and he is definitely not a good guy, I do think there are moments where you can sometimes understand him and sympathize with him.
Up next is juror number 12, aka the guy who could never make up his mind. Now we're getting to the area of people that I don't have any strong opinions on. I'm neutral to pretty much all of these guys. Juror number 12 isn't a bad guy, he's just not very prominent to the conversation and he doesn't seem to be passionate about the situation. He did come up with one very good idea of having everyone in the room explain their reasoning towards their opinion on whether or not the boy is guilty or not. Other than that, however, he hasn't really contributed to the conversation too much. He just kinda does whatever the majority of the people in the room do. I don't even think that the fact that he switches his opinion in a short amount of time to be a bad thing. It's pretty clear that the case is pretty contentious and it's tough to pick a side on. My problem is that he rarely provides any sort of concrete reasoning to why he thinks like that, and usually just acts pretty uninterested in the situation rather than unconfident. I don't think he's a scumbag or anything, he's just not someone who seems to be too involved in the situation, and that's what we're ranking on them on. Up next is juror number 2, aka the nerdy boy. I actually like this guy, but comparing him to everyone else, he doesn't do as much as some people. He seems nice and justifiable, if a bit nerdy and awkward, but he doesn't contribute to the conversation that much. He brings up a few decent points, and I do like how he stands up to the douchebags in the end, but most of the time he acts pretty timid, reserved, and nervous. Now, I don't blame him for doing these things, but since I'm looking at the characters in the context of the situation, he can't be put too high on the list. Also, the fact that th he isn't all that charismatic kind of brings him down. Still, now we're getting into the territory of characters that I do kind of respect. Up next is juror number one, aka the four man. Before I talk about juror number one, I wanted to say that I have obviously never served in a jury because I'm a literal infant, so I probably don't have the best analysis on the four man's job in the situation. Anyway, I like the four man. He seems to do his job pretty well. He stays fair and never really shows his perspective in order to keep the group together. He does a pretty good effort to trying to of trying to have the group stay in a respectful conversation considering how excitable some of the people they at their acts. You do get that one moment where he gets upset, but it's not unwarranted, and besides that, he always acts pretty diplomatic. I don't have much to say about him since he doesn't show his personal perspective too often, again, he's the foreman so it makes sense, but I like him and I think he does a pretty good job at being the foreman of the group. Alright, next is, we're at the halfway point, and next is the guy, uh, juror number 6, aka the guy who works as a painter. Even though he doesn't really stand out of the crowd, and doesn't really do many things that distinguish himself from the others, I notice his positive trait more on my rewatch. While he doesn't contribute heavily to the conversation often, he's always very respectful and kind. He brings up a really good point when he's talking to Henry Fonda in the restroom about what would happen if he let the boy go, and he really was actually guilty. From what I saw of him, he was always logical and his decisions make sense. Probably my favorite thing he does is always stand up to the old man whenever he gets yelled by one of those douchebags. This shows that he's both a dignified and respectful person, but also isn't afraid to stand up to people who be behave like garbage. So even if he isn't a major player in the story, I still think he comes off as a very good man. Alright, up next, we are at the top 5 already. It's juror number 4, aka the guy with the glasses who doesn't sweat. Now, this guy is actually the second to last person to vote not guilty, but I don't think there's a problem, because his reasoning to why he's claiming that the boy is guilty is very fair and understandable. I think that the theme of the film isn't that the boy wasn't guilty, in fact it never actually reveals whether the boy was guilty or not. I think the main theme of the movie is to show the many different ways people look on these type of situations and act in these type of situations. This movie could have been very simplistic and just made all of the cool, intelligent dudes to think that the boy is not guilty, and then all of the rude, stupid dudes to think that the boy was guilty. But they smartly made juror number 4 think that the boy was guilty all the way until the end, despite acting reasonably. I think he always has a very good argument to why the boy is guilty. His points are almost always objective and logical, and you never see him show his personal bias in the situation. Even when you are starting to heavily root for Henry Fonda, you still can't get angry at this guy because everything he says makes sense. 
There are a few times where he acts a little unlikably, like when he gets frustrated with the old man for no reason, but other than that, I think he always acts in a very respectable manner, and he is a very important person in the jury. At number 4, we have Jewer number 5, aka the guy who grows up in the slum. This is a hard one because overall, Jewer number 4 contributed to the conversation more than number 5 did. But I will say this, I personally just like this guy more. He grew up in a slum as a kid and is one of the only ones who has the same background as the kid on trial is. This I think makes his perspective a lot more valuable. He has personal experience more than anyone else, and I think that's important to understanding the story. I don't think that this shows his bias, because he doesn't just immediately vote for the boy not being guilty, he observes for a while and then decides his opinion. I would probably call him the most sympathetic character in the movie because of this. While he is pretty timid, he does bring up a lot of great points, one notable one being the angle of the knife, and how he couldn't have brought this point up if he didn't grow up in the slum, which circles back into the idea that his perspective is important because of his personal experience and background. Overall, I like him quite a bit. He might be the most sympathetic and likable person in the room, and while I don't think that the, he contributes to the conversation that much, he does bring up quite a few excellent points. At number 3 is juror number 9, aka the old man. The old man is the second person to vote not guilty. He provides a lot of very wise reasoning throughout the movie. The reason he decides to vote not guilty is because he thinks the jury could some find something that would make the situation less obvious and that the jury needs to talk about the topic first before deciding whether the boy was guilty or not. If he hadn't stood up and voted, there wouldn't be any chance that the boy would be voted not guilty. He also brings up a great point that the old man wanted to pub wanted publicity, which is why he even came into court as a witness. Most importantly, he brings the final point of the movie that convinces the second to last member of the jury to vote not guilty, which was the point about the woman having glasses. I think the old man contributed a strong amount to the conversation, which is very impressive since he does seem like he's somewhere near the age of 80. There are times where the assholes in the room make him very upset, but he carries on and continues. I think he's the best example of a really cool boomer. Our runner up is Juror number 11, aka the guy with the giant mustache and suspenders. This guy is just a really cool person. He just has all the best qualities. He's disciplined, respectful, wise, and intelligent. He has some of the best comebacks in the movie that are also very subtle. He also rightfully calls out juror number 7 when he votes not guilty for no concrete reason, which I respect a lot. I honestly don't have many great reasons to why I like him a lot. He's respectful, he brings a lot of wise and intelligent points to the situation, and he just seems like a really cool person. Sorry that the section is so short for the number 2 pick, but I don't have much to say about him other than he's just a cool guy. And finally, the big surprise of the video, who is the number one juror? And yeah, obviously it's juror number 8, what a big surprise, aka the one who votes not guilty earliest. I don't think that there are any surprises that this man is at the top of the list. He's the main protagonist of the movie for a good reason. Pretty much every aspect of his character is admirable. As a member of the conversation, he is probably the most essential player. He is the only person in the beginning to vote not guilty, which is already a very praiseworthy act. He could have voted guilty like everyone else, but he specifically votes not guilty just because he thinks it's morally right to do. That proves that he's a pretty courageous man. He then throughout the movie proves his incredible wit and attention to detail. He pretty much does most of the heavy, heavy lifting in the process of convincing everyone in the jury to not vote guilty. He finds very important, logical points that the lawyers didn't bring up. And this really proves his attention to the case where he finds some really good points that are incredibly subtle. Not only that, but he is also able to clearly manipulate people into realizing the flaw in their points. I know manipulation is usually considered a negative character trait, but I think it can be used in positive ways, and he uses them in the ways that help the case. Another thing that is very admirable about him is his dedication to the case. He buys a switchblade knife, which is illegal by the way, just to prove a point. He obviously isn't the type of person to do illegal things, but here I would argue he did the right thing. Throughout the situation, he stays respectful and caring. 
He's never rude, he never explodes at the people, and he always stays level-headed. I don't think there's a single time in the movie where I feel like he was acting uncivil, even when the people around him were. And what I might say is one of his best actions is in the end of the movie, when he brings Juror number 3 as his jacket. Juror number 3 consistently insults and yells at him throughout the whole movie, and yet he still shows him respect by giving him his jacket because he understands that this person is a flawed human being just like everybody else. Overall, he is truly my favorite jury member in this film, and I don't think that comes as a shock to anybody. Alright, well, thanks for watching the video. I don't have any good conclusion, so I hope you guys all have a very nice week, a nice month, a nice year, a nice decade, a nice life, a nice afterlife, and yeah, anyway, play the credits.